Carlos Robles. Today we are in the historic city of Campeche here on the Gulf of Mexico. Campeche is an amazing place known as Mexico's fortress city. It is the one city that has its original walls intact around it, which originally were built to protect it from pirate attacks. Campeche was actually sacked by pirates back in the 16th and 17th century, it was all under constant threat. So the Spanish decided to build all these forts and walls to protect the city and the maritime trade that originated from here. We're here at the Angel Maya, so called because this statue of this angel, unlike most of the other statues of angels you're gonna see all over Mexico, is depicts of a Mayan face. So it's called the Mayan angel. It's a testament to the Mayan peoples who originally lived here before the arrival of the Spanish and it was still called Campeche their home. Campeche as a state and as a city still retains much of its Mayan heritage. We're gonna start exploring this amazing city from here so that maybe you too can add this destination to your very own bucket list so that you too can have your own rambling and roving adventure. Let's go. So Campeche is located on the shores of the Gulf of Mexico. It's very blustery today. The seas here can be a little rough. It's not really known for its swimmable beaches. It actually doesn't really have beaches. It's more known for its mangrove forest and swamps, <laughs> you know. It doesn't sound very enticing, but if you're a nature lover and you like looking at, you know, birds, snakes, and things you would find in mangrove forests, you, know, you can come here. It has a really, really nice malecon that goes from the south all the way to the north. Just a very, very long stretch of walkable and bikeable paths that is very pleasant to walk and bike. It's just a very short walk to get from the Malecon to the downtown. You can have dinner and then just go walk it off at the Malecon really, really quickly. It's a really great place to be there for. <laughs> it's a really good place to be there for for the sunset or you know by night. Once it, the heat dies off a little, it's so humid here and you get that nice sea breeze walking by the side of the ocean. This is outrageous. Right behind me is Campeche seawall. These are a part of the walls that originally protected the city of Campeche. So this is the gate that originally pointed towards the sea. This is where you would have access to Campeche's port. So you have these battlements all over the downtown. During the 19th century, a big part of Campeche's walls were torn down so that the city would have better ventilation because they thought that that would help with preventing disease. Considering that this is like a pretty swampy region, it's very prone to malaria and, not, it was, and other diseases which greatly affected the Spanish when they were colonizing here. Campeche still boasts much of its colonial architecture. It's a UNESCO protected World Heritage Site for the vibrancy of its colonial architecture and how well preserved it is. It really is a place where you can just come and snap some Instagram worthy pictures with the right lighting.
So we're right outside the museum of uh, Baluarte, the walls of the city. This hosts a small museum dedicated to ancient Mayan artifacts found in the vicinity. There are plenty of ruins around here that you can visit from Campeche by bus or taking private tours or, or taking a, a taxi. And they even have some amazing stelas over here. Let me show you. And we are gonna go up into the walls to see what the Spanish garrison would have seen while defending this city from pirates. The stelas in this museum are absolutely incredible. Mayans are known for raising these amazing monuments to their rulers and commemorating anything important that happened within their communities, their cities, by engraving the effigies of their rulers onto these stelas and the glyphs that commemorate the actual date when these events happen. So that is how archaeologists can tell how and when certain historic events happened for the ancient Maya. It's just absolutely fascinating, isn't it? Some of these pieces in the museum are incredible. You can see how an ancient Mayan Ahau or ruler came with a dress entirely in jade. So jade comes only from the Motagua Valley in Guatemala, which means that the cities from this area were linked all the way to Guatemala, because that's where the, from where they had sourced the jade. You have this amazing funerary mask from Calakmul. Calakmul is famous for the Star Wars that it fought with its rival city Tikal in northern Guatemala. These wars were called the Star Wars because the Mayans would go to war every time Venus aligned in the certain position that allowed them to go to war. So these wars would have been the, kind of the same dynamic as happened in Greece between Athens and its rival Sparta. So just like a very similar rivalry with these two rival empires trying to just dominate each other. We're now climbing up into Campeche's walls to get some awesome panoramic views of the city you can see the cathedral peeking over the rooftops here in the back this is a really cool museum only 70 pesos per person that's about three to three to four dollars depending on what the current exchange rate is and as you can see here this is from where the city would have been defended with spaces for the cannons and to shoot down at any attackers. Campeche was constantly under threat from pirate attacks well into the 19th century. It was just so isolated, it was so easy to attack, so they had to build this, these fortifications. So hard to try and maneuver like a musket in here. I can't even imagine it. This is so cool to be 
just walking down this this just to be walking along the walls of Campeche it just really reminds me of Cartagena in Colombia with its massive walls and forts it's just you know a jewel of Spanish colonial architecture and just the whole city has been pretty well preserved here in the downtown except for those pieces of walls that are missing Welcome to my home <laughs> Trolleys are such a touristy thing to do. Better be up here and appreciate a good view. Now we're at the main plaza here in downtown Campeche. We're here right after Dia de Muertos. It's mid-November and they have this really cool little ofrenda still up commemorating Dia de Muertos pigeons like in every single Mexican plaza commemorating um, milk and dairy <laughs> <laughs> yeah because it's sponsored it's really by sponsored. like a local milk company or whatever We don't even flinch. <laughs> These are funny. You want to keep it? So we're standing right in front of the cathedral, which is massive. You can just imagine how the people of Campeche, when they would go out to see, would gaze back at the city and see the tops of this cathedral sticking over the walls. So there's a cool story here in Campeche. So in the church of San Roman, they hold this image of a black Jesus that, according to the tradition, washed up on the shores of Campeche after a shipwreck. And the local townspeople 
took it in as this miracle and now it's venerated as the black Christ of San Roman here. It's traditional, I believe, for the people of Campeche to take this image every year during the, the, its fiesta and they, they will take it out on boats and give it like a nice ride over in the ocean to kind of commemorate the event of like them finding the, this image of Christ. So we're walking down Calle 59. This whole area is the downtown bar and restaurant area. When night falls, this place just comes alive with people and music and all kinds of, of rowdy fun. The downtown is so colorful. It's like a mixture of Merida and Chetumal or different aspects of life here in the Yucatan. So this these like colonial buildings, the sea breeze wafting in over the open walls and just this kind of maritime feel, Mexican feel to it. Always have the cochinita PV at these restaurants. You gotta love the local Yucatec fair. So, how long should you stay here in Campeche? To be honest, I would say two nights tops. Once you've seen the downtown and gotten a feel for the museums, walk the wall walk around the Malecon a little bit, you know, like the waterfront, you're pretty much done with the city. Once, you're, once you see the forts and perhaps take a look at some of the mangrove forests outside of the city or it's Na, the nearby ruins, that is pretty much it. I would move north to Merida, south to Palenque or otherwise east if you want to see Calakmul in the middle of the Yucatan. So this is Calle 59 by night. Just tons of little restaurants and bars, just places to chill, you just enjoy a good night out here in Campeche. We actually have to leave Campeche to go to Ciudad del Carmen because we're moving north. So we're rushing to Chocolha, the one good chocolate place here, to get some chocolate before we go. I want to show it to Bridget.
leaving Campeche. So it's a cool little trip to do outside of Merida. If you want to leave the area for a day and just do like a little jaunt on your way to somewhere else. For example, if you're passing towards Palenque or San Cristobal, this is a good stop to make as a halfway point before you continue your journey on. So we hope you enjoyed this journey with us and remember to like and subscribe. We're trying to grow our channel to a thousand subscribers. So your subscribe is always welcome. Share with your friends, comment, let us know what you think of our video. Until our next adventures, amigos. Adios. Keep traveling, my friends.